Hi there. During this session, I'm going to be talking about energy degradation. Now, energy degradation is the loss of useful energy when we're going through any energy transfer process. This is um, normally shown using what's known as a Sankey diagram, so I'm going to be talking about that. And this is really, really important when we're considering um, the constant energy transfer which takes place repeatedly in a combustion engine, which is one of the main forms of energy transfer which we use for everyday life. So those are the two things I'm going to be focused on during this session. So first of all, we're going to talk about energy transfer diagrams, often known as Sankey diagrams. I'm going to introduce a general situation. I've got a light bulb that runs on 100 watts, so 100 joules per second. And this transfers 20 joules per second into light, and the rest is <coughs> transferred into not useful heat. So how can I show this diagrammatically? First of all, I think about the input energy, 100 joules per second. Now, the important bit of this diagram is my 100 joules per second is related to the width of my diagram. So here I've quickly shown it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 squares across. So that means each square is the equivalent to 10 joules per second of input energy. Then I'm going to show some output energy. I've broken my output energy into 20 joules per second of light energy and 80 joules per second is given out to the surroundings as heat. Now this is a Sankey diagram. Now it's important to recognize that I've simplified it by putting uh, boxes in and the boxes can easily be shown worked out that the width of one box or one box is equal to 10 joules per second. So that means the output of light energy is 20 joules per second so that means there's a width of two boxes and for the wasted heat energy to the surroundings that is 80 joules per second so I've shown that as eight boxes. Now not all Sankey diagrams are shown as explicitly as this but for them to be accurate it's really important that there's a consistent relationship between the width of the arrow. Notice this is the width, it is not the number of squares, it's not the area of squares shown here, it's the width is related to the amount of energy going, um, either input energy or specific types of output energy. So from this diagram I can find out quite quickly and recognize that okay, 100 joules per second of energy is going in, this is electrical energy to my light bulb, 20 joules per second is coming out as useful energy and 80 joules per second is being given up as wasted as heat energy. Um, often this is used to calculate efficiency. Efficiency is something which we've spoken about before. So efficiency is going to be uh, output energy divided by input energy times by 100 to give me a percentage value. So 20 divided by 100 times 100 means that the efficiency of this light bulb is only 20%. So that's how energy transfer can be shown diagrammatically. Time to start thinking about some situations uh, more specific. The one we're going to talk about in detail is that of the combustion engine. So I have a simple model of an internal combustion engine. There's lots of different types and uh, of combustion engine. So they all have slight nuances and differences. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. Uh, what this model kind of shows fairly effectively is what happens is we have a piston and the piston is caused to move up and down and that moving up and down the piston causes the rotation of a crankshaft which causes the um, that rotational energy is then transferred into something else. If it was a car, it would be the motion of the car. Now, how this takes place is because what we have here is somewhere in this system we have a combination of petrol and air being ignited and that the ignition of petrol and air causes sudden expansion of gas, pushing the piston out. Then there's a sucking process where that compression then goes back down again and then there's more petrol and air pushed in and that gets compressed down at the last moment it gets ignited again. It's repeated in this process again and again and again. 
Now, I don't need you to worry about details too much, but we're going to think about exactly how the combustion energy allows energy or work to be done. So for that, I'm going to start off breaking it down and just thinking about a gas which is being caused to expand. So how's work done on a piston? Okay, so let's think about this as in steps. So I've got a graph showing uh, pressure volume graph um, for expansion at a constant pressure of gas. So that's going to help us. It's going to lead us through some thinking in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to th get you to think about some steps. First of all, what's the formula for calculating work? Okay, so work done is known to be work is force times distance. Okay. Force times distance is useful. It tells us the work done. But we only know pressure and volume here. Now, as it happens, force times distance is equal to pressure times volume. Think of that using units. Force is in newtons and distance is in meters. But pressure is newtons per meter squared. And volume is in meters cubed. So if we multiply it through, we have exactly the same units of newtons times distance. Now, how could this be related to work done by the gas? Well, what we see here is if anything expands and the volume increases, that change in volume, in this case assuming the pressure is kept the same, this is for simple purposes, that means there's work being done by the gas. As it expands, work is done by the gas. Uh, vice versa, as it happens. So expansion causes work done by the gas, and compression means that work is done on the gas. We need to push and squeeze to cause the gas to compress. And that means work is being done. Now, that's simple for one moment of gas. What we have in a combustion engine is just a repeated process. Repeated, 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 repeated process. So that involves um, a little bit more complexity. And we just need to have a general overview of this. So here's a diagram considering a piston engine. So what happens here, a piston engine is a, a, a form of combustion engine. What happens is the piston causes, is pushed down, and the weight of the piston um, causes the, is the work being done to cause that compression. Now, uh, cycle one, okay, heat goes in. As heat goes in, that causes an expansion. So the expansion is, this is work being done on the system. Then what happens is the expansion gets to some point, uh, then it starts to release heat. As it releases heat, it cools down, so therefore uh, the piston can allow to start to do some work on it. So it compresses down, and there's heat going out. And at that moment in time, the heat goes out, then what happens is uh, the temperature stays the same, but we get an increase in pressure, and the increase in pressure allows this to rotate again. So then we have heat going in, the constant pressure, uh, constant temperature means the temperature stays the same, but there is uh, the pressure is reduced, and then the heat uh, is lost, and then this process is repeated time and time again. The key thing here is not about the finer details, it's about this repeated process. And work being done can be measured by the size of the square at the center, or the size of the shape at the center of this graph. Now, um, this all means that with heat going out of the system and heat going into the system, that means some heat is going to be lost. This is not a perfectly efficient system because it's repeated time and time again now, this is stated by the IB. What the IB requires is for you to state that thermal energy may be completely converted to work in a single process. So once, this is fine. But if you have to do this again and again and again in a cyclical process, then some of the energy is lost from the system, which is exactly what we're talking about here. Not all the energy is kept in because it has to be repeated. And when it loses some heat, heat goes out of the system. And then that means that we're losing heat energy and losing energy. Um, I said my description of this 
if thermal energy is put into a system uh, to do some work with the equivalent amount of expansion, that's fine. But if we repeat this, it means there's got to be compression as well, and there's got to be some heat loss, so that means we're always going to waste energy. Coming back to the starting point, how this could be shown diagrammatically is a combustion energy. Although 100% of the energy will go in from the fuel, we see loss, energy is lost through fric friction, energy is lost through having to cool the system, energy is lost through the exhaust gases as well. So that means in some cases we only have 25% of the energy effectively being used by the combustion engine. And that wraps up the idea about energy degradation.